to just echo the point the chairman just made, okay, on this issue of the documents. Let me just take a hypothetical. Well, let me, let me start with this. Every agency of our government, right, they come here before Congress, they have oversight committees, they have public hearings. The questions are asked. They have to answer them in public. People have to testify. The unique aspect of what your agencies do is, by necessity, it has to be in secret. Most of what you do has to be kept secret. That's the work of intelligence. So how do you conduct oversight over something like that? For a long time, there really wasn't any congressional oversight until the mid-1970s when committees uh, uncovered all kinds of uh, situations involving the intelligence communities, actually almost destroyed the CIA. And the result is the creation of this committee and our counterpart in the House. And so basically, it comes down to a handful of members in the House and Senate who are entrusted with conducting oversight to ensure that not only is the intelligence agencies focused on the right things, but are doing it in a way that protects both civil liberties and our national security. Difficult balance. So now we come to, that's our role, and it's one we have to play very carefully, and, and, and one that we, that's really important for the country, because we need what you do. We also understand that left unsupervised, any agency at any time, especially ones with these extraordinary powers, uh, can do things that are really troubling and end up actually threatening these agencies' ability to continue to work. Now, getting to these classified documents. I want to, just this hypothetical, if tomorrow I take a folder full of classified information, or anybody does, outside the building inappropriately, okay, for whatever reason, there's going to be an investigation. And there are going to be two things that are going to happen. And there are two individual tracks. Track number one is, I violated the law. I commit, potentially committed a crime. Has been committed because information that's classified was removed from its proper setting. And the result is that there's going to be an investigation. And it could involve the criminal justice system. In most cases, obviously, when it comes to former presidents, may require a special counsel. But generally, it's the US attorney that's going to look at that and, and figure that part of it out. Okay. That's not our oversight, and that's not our job to interfere in that. Separate from that is the job the intelligence agencies have of assessing, OK, this is the information that was stored inappropriately. Here is the risks to the country if that information was seen by someone who shouldn't have seen it. And here's what we are doing to mitigate against that risk. The only, how can we possibly conduct oversight over, A, whether you've assigned the proper risk assessment, and B, over whether the mitigation is appropriate. How can we possibly do that if we don't know what we're talking about? And that's really the, the situation that we're at right now. And that is that even though undoubtedly the information that was found in all three sites and so forth are things that we would have had access to, unless we can identify them, we can't begin to A, opine over whether or not the risk assessment is accurate, and B, whether the mitigation that's been assigned is appropriate. We can't do our job. And a special counsel cannot have veto authority over Congress's ability to do its job. It just can't happen. It won't happen. And so it will change the nature of the relationship between this committee, which I think has been very cooperative. And I know we don't have a lot of competition in terms of cooperation, but very cooperative. Um, and, and I'm very proud of the work this committee's done. And I don't want it to get to that, and it shouldn't get to that. But this is going to be addressed one way or the other. Amen.